All right, welcome on into a Wednesday edition of Philly Voice Sports Bets. He is Matt Cherico in the upper left-hand corner. I am Harry Mays, and of course, he is Aton Shander, bedecked in his Huntington Valley Country Club I own. pink shirt. I love this shirt. Thank it's you, all, sir. And he had the beanie on for a little while. He was going HVCC on top of HVCC. Here it is. Let's see if I can get there it going it with the headphones. You know, yeah, my mom really is a big fan of the beanie uh on Aton and Cherico is sitting in his Fortnite chair in <laughs> front of all of his New York uh memorabilia I can see a big Yankees yep. thing back there so we got yep. a lot going on today oh, and boy. we also have a new graphic we yeah. see the new Look graphics that. here so yeah good job uh good out of job, Cherico Jared. with that um but a lot to get to I know we got to cool. talk about that awful Monday night game uh which i mean third play in kyler murray is done and he's done for the season unfortunately we hate to see that but i did see i forgot to put in the over in his rushing yards well and, and i wish i did it because i wanted to see if DraftKings would refund me like bet mgm did apparently they did yeah it, it had to be either solo bets or the only leg that lost you a same game or same game parlay X. Okay. Now I can tell you this, FanDuel did not. Oh. I had a because I bet Kyler Murray over rushing yards on FanDuel, and I did not receive a free bet as a result of that. I just got burned to the ground. So yeah, terrible. Pretty disappointed that I, I used the wrong book. Yeah, we hate to see that, but we all. I also I did tell you on the Mac Jones over one and a half TDs, which was it, a bust. Well, the because- pick didn't. The pick hit. The pick. I hit the right. I tailed yeah. pick for sure. Did you hit the pick? <laughs> no. I mean, my God, Harry, we hit the side and we hit the total. I know. <laughs> Player prop. God. It, how, it's how do they how do they with. score 27 points and he not throw two touchdowns? Uh, I, I have no I, idea. And and Ramondre Stevenson got hurt in like yes. the first quarter. At Everybody top. got hurt. It, yep. it makes no – Hunter Henry had a shot on that long one. Yes. It, it makes no – He got happen. tackled at the four, I think. <laughs> it makes no sense. Okay? <laughs> that game sucked. Six yeah. ways to Sunday. But I will point out, uh, Cliff Kingsbury is going to be available and available very soon, possibly to take the Mississippi State position Correct. because he did play for the Pirate at Texas Tech and runs essentially the same type of offense. It would be a great fit. He's going to be unemployed. He stinks at the NFL level. Yeah. The Arizona Cardinals are 1-12 and 12 straight up in their last 13 home games. Think awesome. about that. No, no, no. It's it's so bad. Let me tell you this, Harry. That's prop. Like, if you were to look at second half trends for Cliff Kingsbury in the second half of the year, and also look at how bad he is both straight up and against the spread in second halves where he's trailing in football games. I know technically he wasn't trailing on Monday night, but that that number that you gave as far as what they were straight up in the, what their last thirteen. Yeah, that's probably like the nicest or one of the nicest not kingsbury this is an auto fade now right there it is or- auto fade i love that yeah <laughs> not a lot of soon huh no <laughs> <laughs> yes and and speaking of I, I brought up the pirate we got to pour one out yeah uh for the great mike leach rest in peace the pirate and if you if you know anything about this guy and or if you don't i suggest you read up on him because he is one interesting character uh, one of the great characters of college football, an innovator, uh, you know, an incredible innovator of offense going back uh, way to his days, even before he got to the University of Kentucky with Hal Mummy and they did the air raid offense. Yeah. I mean, he invented the air raid offense, which now you're starting to see blend into the NFL a little bit here and there as the college quarterbacks sort of take take over. Um, But he wrote a book on Geronimo. He has a law degree. I mean, this guy, he's a renaissance man. And he's gone way too soon at the age of 61. Well said, man. Well, I I don't know. I I mean, I'll let Cherico chime in here because I I don't know what more I'll add. Uh, I'll say that there are a handful, if not more, YouTube videos of Mike Leach just talking about yeah. stuff that's not football, including right. like marriage. Wasn't it you who sent me that link about marriage, right? Yeah. Like they're all, the, and, and then you go down this rabbit hole. So yeah, Mike Leach is an innovator. He's a coach. He's a mentor. He's all of that in college football. But 
as you said, and there's video to prove it. Yeah, he is one hell of an interesting human being. He really, he really was, and uh, you know, he's going to be missed. I know by me and everybody who, who follows the college game. So, all right, let's let's well, move on. Matt? You know, maybe Matt's got some thoughts. I don't I know. Say he's, he's definitely touched the hearts of a lot of <laughs> players that we've come to know and love. And you know, he's a great football coach, but he's an even better person. So it definitely takes a toll losing somebody who is so great off the field at okay. kind of mentoring these guys. Can I ask you a, a quick question? Because I know you wanted to move on here, all right? Uh, this conversation has to be had, but you can't have it on a regular show. You mm. can only have it under the guise of a sports betting show. Right. As soon as I found out that Mike Leach was sick, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I just, he's in the hospital. And, mm -hmm. and I had no idea that this was a life threatening in the sense of like, he wasn't going to make it. I assumed like I think a lot of people that he was going to be sick he was going to miss some time and either he's back for the bowl game or he would miss enough time that he wouldn't be back <clears throat> so you took so, Mississippi State no no no, no. I took Illinois oh okay he, I laid look I took Illinois because nobody as far as no key individual of them has either hit the transfer portal their guy who declared I think at the tight end is all indications are he's playing in this bowl game. I thought that there would be enough time of not having Mike Leach to prepare for a game that would significantly impact 19 to 21 year old kids about not having your, it's one thing to play for the Gipper fellas. Right, it's right. To not be prepared. Now Mike Leach has passed and I don't know what the fuck to do. Right. I, I'm staying away from the game. For, I don't for think obvious reasons. But, but I tell you, uh, yeah, they're going to play it, I think. You think? I think they are. But I will tell you, the Illinois defensive coordinator just got the head coaching job at Purdue. Well, that's not great. Okay, so I just want to let right. you know that. You might be right. out the door. And that's part of the stuff you got to pay attention to well, this yeah, time of year. Well, yeah, you know, the portal and yeah. everything else, and uh, there's nothing. All right, well, well, how about this? Let's do this. Let's do this. Luke Ford, by the way, was the tight end, and he declared okay. in the NFL he's not, he's not leaving. He's going to play. Why don't we do this? And Matt, I don't know where you stand on this. Even money, all right? No odds, no juice, no vig, nothing like that. I say they don't play. You say they do play. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think they do. Yeah, I, I think, think they ultimately do. they do just because it's at the end of the day, it is a business, you know, and the, the show will go on regardless. And unfortunately, I think even despite him passing i think they still make him play the game you guys right. are, are heartless no i just think they make a big deal out of mike leach it's the it's kind of their opportunity to you know for the network espn is probably carrying it uh, to yes, make a yeah, big yeah, you know right. mike leach thing you know well, i have no doubt that there's some suit some penguin head up yeah. in the corner office in bristol connecticut ah we gotta get this bowl game out there so how can we, can we maximize how can viewers? we get rinaldi back yeah, from exactly. fox just for this game right right i mean no, I get it. I, there's going to be a push for it. I, I, that's all. I, I just wanted to bring that out there in case anybody else had that ticket. Like, I, I think it's a pass right now, but yeah, I jumped on it expecting Leach to be there. And now that he's not, I feel like I'm kind of screwed. Well, maybe you can go on prop swap with that one. Who maybe. knows? But but I think, the, you know, the best thing about some of these meaningless bowl games, and most of them, 98% of them are meaningless, is it's an in-game Pro uh, opportunity you you determine which team looks like they want to be there and you know somehow try to get the the, the advantage of that line in any way shape or form that you can i love it yeah i mean but i will say we went back and we did some uh pro picks on monday show look aheads and i just want to give an update of where some of these lines went um i gave out cincinnati that line has stayed steady at minus three and a half buffalo was seven and now it's seven and a half so we got the advantage of a half a point and seattle is went from three and a half to three yep at home oh, that's gonna be a good game tomorrow night three and a, right three and a half i was looking at the teaser there yeah at home yeah so and and that's what i was worried about why i jumped on san francisco minus one and a half first half first half, half. Is, yeah is that move now against me so if you're on seattle in any capacity it moved for you and well technically if you jumped on them it moved against you right so yeah. my whole point being is that th that line movement impacted me as well on a lesser scale with san fran because i imagine that's at two if not two and a half now for the first half i still love getting in under two by the way for san fran the game it like that that's why i didn't touch the game right you know carol back door exactly exactly yeah, yeah. or win <laughs> 
Like it has right. backdoor win written all over it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about this one? We got the Rams, Harry, plus eight. That I believe is still down to plus seven now. Okay, yeah, Monday night with uh, with Baker. I've even seen six and a half too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I am amazed that it went through seven, and I feel exceptionally. I mean, are you serious? Six and a half? Yeah, that's crazy. All right, uh, Thursday night, a prop bet that I was looking at, and I want to run this by you. Obviously, no Debo Samuel, and whatever lines are already out there have already reflected that, okay, in, in where they are, let's say on DraftKings, for a, a receptions and yards receiving for like a McCaffrey. I did some digging in his seven games that he's played for the San Francisco 49ers. Forget about the Carolina stats, they don't sure. matter. Sure. He's been targeted 43 times in seven games. He's got 35 receptions, so that's five a game, 216 yards total. That's 31 yards per game. His over is 39 and a half, so they've really juiced this thing, knowing that Debo's out of there. That's the number. Would you go over or under? I still might think over, but I'm definitely going over four and a half receptions because I think you know Brock Purdy as the backup is going to heavily rely on him, especially with no Debo. So you're looking at uh, 39 and a half. So you're looking at 40 receiving yards mm -hmm. and 79. I'm just looking at his rush and receiving yards. I mean, if he goes over both, right? Mm -hmm. 38, I have 38 and a half receiving yards. Okay. Uh, I'm talking. Okay. So I think, honestly, Man, it moved three yards. It did move three full yards. I I think you can go Russian receiving yards. It's at 121 and a half. That's a big number. Mm -hmm. But you're already going over receiving yards. The problem is that it's juiced, right? Right. And you don't want to go over that at what, minus 140? Yes. Yeah, that's a little tough, that one. But... Well, actually, hold on a second. No, it's minus 110 on DraftKings. I, oh, I have, okay. Yeah, I have... 37 yeah. and a half minus 115. Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised he didn't hit the rushing stat, to be honest with you. I, I think receptions is the way to go of those two. But okay. I'd also throw in at McCaffrey over 70. Look, I think 78 and a half, 79 and a half is probably uh, a lot. It's 78 and a half right now. If you could get McCaffrey maybe on like FanDuel for 80 plus or something like that, it, it might move it a little bit more. But 78 mm. and a half is fine for me. I, so I would tail your receptions and then also add in the over on rushing. And by game time, those numbers probably go up anyway. Well, the rushing has already gone up five. Okay. Oh, wow. Or, or pardon me, three since yesterday morning. Okay. So this was at 75 and a half, and now it's at 78 and a half. So you're right. It's, it's going to keep going up. Okay. I don't see a buyback of like 80 yards on Christian McCaffrey. Under. Right. People right. think he's going to run all over this team. Yeah. I was looking um, – it's funny because Kyle Shanahan is such a mastermind that you would think you're missing your number one quarterback. Now you're missing Debo Samuel. You would think like everybody else on the team is going to be impacted negatively, losing talent like that. But Kyle Shanahan is just so smart that we don't doubt he's going to use these other guys in such crazy aspects of an offensive game. I have George Kittle going over in his receptions just because I think he's going to be able to get a lot of dump offs, be that safety blanket for Purdy throughout this uh, this game against the Seahawks, because obviously the Seahawks have a solid secondary. I right. think he's going to be looking to pass the ball, and then he's going to oftentimes find himself looking at Kittle in kind of that lower layer just because that secondary is so clamped down. So sitting at three and a half receptions, I like the over for minus 115. That's a good call, man. I mean, I you could definitely see one thing they'd love to do with Debo is get him the ball fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like as quick as possible. And you could see not the same exact play, but you can see that mentality of trying to get the ball to Kittle fast and work some one on ones with him, even if it's like a quasi tight end half wide exactly. receiver. They're so right. big on yards after catch. Yeah. They yes, love that... Just giving the guy ball in space and yep. let him kind of work with it. That's a good one. All right. Yeah. We're, we got to build this here as far as. Uh, little safe game parlay so we can come back to this here so all right let's let's start with receptions we had for harry right on christian mccaffrey four and a half four and a half so we'll go five plus there's the first one there and then Cherico just had the same thing for george kittle hey, george wow these crumbs don't have a, a kittle reception that's fine no. we'll, we'll build something else that's fine <clears throat> uh but i do like them individually so i'm gonna play that for sure it makes sense what do you think about a, you know, somebody on Seattle 
this is not Arizona, right? Like this is not a bottom feeder type team. Seattle is going to score at some point, but it's probably going to be, you know, I, I wonder if you take a shot on their defense or if you take a shot on, you know, somebody like Will Disley, mm. like out there, red zone, not Noah Fant, like the number one guy. But right. I don't know, just it feels it's a Thursday night game. It's Seattle. It feels like it's not going to be the typical Goodwin slash Lockett who's going to dominate. You know, right. I mean, maybe Homer, you're getting plus odds for Homer. So I don't know. But I would stay away from Lockett and Metcalf and see if there's anything long range. You know, it's still, look, it's still Brock Purdy. Right, and there's a yes. reason why guys don't that are that are not named Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady don't go 16 weeks every year, right, as backups that come out of nowhere and mm -hmm. dominate the league. So maybe he's due for a shitty game. Yeah, short week now playing against a mastermind defensive coach uh, that with a great sec with a good second. Well, so on the road in Seattle. Yeah, Seahawks D special teams plus 700 for an any time. I mean, why yeah, not? Put a why not? On there? Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Um, well, All, right. Not. All right. Anything else in the NFL? I'm looking at a teaser for the NFL right now, but uh, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity first to uh, see if there's any an additional look yeah. aheads or. I got, well, uh, the teaser that I got, and again, this changed. So get it where you fit in. This was a six and a half point teaser. Pushed the Ravens up to nine, Seattle up to 10, mm. and Philadelphia down to minus two and a half. I, I look shit happens. It's a crazy league. The Eagles could lose. I get that, but I, I feel okay under three at least. So that's the first one that I ran with that three leg. And, and again, I maintain that it doesn't matter who Baltimore has to have a week of practice at quarterback. It's not a six to nine point. We just saw this last yeah. week, and their their guy got hurt, and they still won the game outright with a third. And the third so, stringer looked half decent. Exactly right. Yeah. So you give them a week. Uh, the other one before you jump in, Jericho, real quick. Oh, actually, two real quick. The teaser was another teaser, just two legs. So you're you're laying some juice, right? Minus 140 on this. Eagles down to minus two. You don't gain value. Like 10 is not as key of a number as people think. 14 is way more of a key number than it thinks. So you don't really gain value by teasing a 14-point favorite down to seven. But I think this week, these sets of circumstances where – Houston just comes like Houston put the NFL on notice that if you take us lightly, you can get your ass beat. And there's no way Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes don't win by more than a touchdown. So I teased Philadelphia down minus two, Kansas City minus seven. And the mm -hmm. last one I told you I got in before Sunday night or the yeah the Sunday night game was the Chargers minus two and a half. So oh okay, I like that. Yeah, I like it's interesting because you you didn't select any of the teams that that I'm looking at, so it's very interesting. So a lot no, of but I, what I like you, Harry, is build a mass teaser with mine and yours there. So, <laughs> well, it? let me know what you think about this then, because I'm taking two one point underdogs, okay, up to seven. The Vegas Raiders plus one to plus seven hosting the New England Patriots, who are living out somewhere in the in the Pacific time zone right. for this week. Um, the Raiders seem to always be in games. They lose games a lot, but they'll lose them by four or five points. Uh, I don't see them getting blown out, and I don't see them getting blown out by Mac Jones. So I like them plus the seven. And the Detroit Lions going on the road to the Jets. I think this is going to be a really entertaining game and a close one. I'm taking the seven. Yeah, I uh... – I don't know what to do with that Jets game, Matt. I don't know what you what you think. But Honestly, I was thinking away. I, I really do like the Detroit Lions. Like <laughs> the more that they are getting healthy towards the end of the season, the more I'm kind of opening up towards them. Um, I think Mike White has peaked in the NFL. I think mm. the last two weeks, not last week, obviously, because he got folded in the half lawn chair style. But the few weeks before that, I think, were his peak in the NFL. And I think a, a solid defense, now that they're starting to get a little healthy, I think they're going to be able to game plan against him a little bit better. I think they're seeing that Garrett Wilson is really the only threat that's extremely significant on the offensive side for the Jets. So I think they're going to lock down. And I was taking them straight up on the money line okay. at plus, or, uh, minus 105. Is there a Penne Sewell receptions total I'm that we sure, can take offshore. over a half? <laughs> Come on. Well, let me check offshore. Let me, let me see if I can that find could get it. Did you see that play last week? Ridiculous. Yeah, I, and, and I needed that stop, by the way. There was some bet that I had in that game that I needed that stop. Yeah. And my God, that play killed it. Whatever How it was. athletic is he, though? 
I mean, he had, to re sort of reverse, he had to reverse his body to catch that ball and then have the wherewithal to know where he had to be to get over the, the first down marker, and he dove. It was, it was a, a genius play. A lot of rope drills are. Yeah, okay. exactly right. <laughs> Another one that I liked, uh, I was taking the Cincinnati Bengals. They've won five yeah. in a row now. Five yeah. big wins. Yeah, they're, they're coming. getting right. Yeah, they are on the way. Joe Burrow finally finding that kind of groove again with Jamar yeah. Chase. Jamar's back on the field. And honestly, Tampa Bay has been so lackluster. Mm -hmm. I'm not really afraid to bet against Tom Brady anymore. He looked 46 years old last he week. Did. He, he really did. did. He time. missed a lot of open receivers. That was the the, the eye-opening thing for me. Yeah, it, you know? it really is. I mean, at this point, I think it's just over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I'm taking the minus four, minus 102. Uh, I really think the Bengals are just going to continue this offensive barrage that they've been having. Beautiful. Any NBA the, stuff? Any uh, the NBA has been. I don't even know what to make. I got the college. NBA. In fact, because oh. college, I, I look. Don't I give me Kennesaw me. State. Or I know. The I Citadel. Told, I went three and one on a night on the, my Discord, and of course, the one I give out here that loses. So I, I'm going to come right back. A uh, player props. If you can find these, my God, these are smash central. But they don't come out as early as we do the show. So mm -hmm. I'll just give you the two. And uh, we'll go from there. First off, love Drexel in this spot tonight. Oh, the Dragons. Love Drexel. If you can get a first half play, I think that would be the one, eight or higher. But I, I'll take him at 14 and a half if, if you can still get that when you're watching this. Look, Seton Hall comes off a gigantic victory against Rutgers. They're at home. They're taking on a team that they know they're significantly better than. There's going to be some letdown in this game, either at the start or at the end, opening up a backdoor cover. Where is this Drexel, game? Uh, it's at Seton Hall. Oh, okay. And Drexel comes off a big one. Look, they, they were getting their ass kicked locally. They finally get a local win. So I think there's a little momentum for them on the road. And I think they can steal at, at either a first half or a backdoor cover. And then the last one, I just think this line is off. I don't have a lot of analysis, but Georgia Southern minus four. You can get that on points bet. It's three everywhere else. And I want to line shop that one. Okay. All right. All right. And NBA wow. wise, uh, yeah, college, Harry. Right? That's where it's at. The college place. Yeah. Fuck the NBA. I hate it. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say <laughs> NBA doesn't even really have player props up for today so far. So I was just looking. Um, early. I got one for you, Jericho. That I was that I already bet that I'm gonna bounce off you. But go ahead. Okay. All right. I got uh, Cavs Mavericks over two fifteen and a half tonight. Um, I think this is a clear over type of game. Donovan Mitchell and Luka Doncic. I mean, that's as much offense as you could really ask. There's not going to be much defense played on either side of the ball. So I think that kind of speaks for itself. And uh, over 215 and a half, I think we should hit that one. Honestly, it could hit in the third quarter. So. Wow. Uh, I love that you brought that game up. Let's stay there if we can real quick, Harry, because I took – all right. Evan Mobley's rebound prop is eight and a half, and it's minus 140. His double-double is plus 140. He's going to get a double-double tonight. He's going to score yeah. double-digit points. Mm. So essentially what you're doing is betting 10 rebounds at right. plus 140 for Evan Mobley. So I really yeah. like that one. And then there's another one. That's which shrewd was, right there. Look, I mean, look, that, that same, is same shrewd. Same mentality, same mentality. Over 19 and a half points and rebounds for Mason Plumley. Oh. This is look, I know. Hold your breath. All right. Look away. Hold your nose. Oh. Whatever you want here. But this is a guy who uh, on a combination should be hitting 20 every night. It's just a matter of how they come. So that should be 20 and a half on the books. If you could get it at 19 and a half, all I'm saying. All right. All right. What were the all odds right. on that too? Because I'm seeing that that could be some solid. Uh, I believe it's minus, it should be minus 110. I don't think you're getting anything plus because it's just a typical point rebound play. Let me look real quick in that Hornets okay. game. But, yeah, that uh, that would be the one there. No, nah, Miles Plumley. honestly, he's been incredible this season in terms of props. If you've been – I don't know who came into the season betting on Miles Plumley consistently, but I tip your hat, tip my hat to you because that guy's been cashing out. So. Yeah. I got, uh, oh, I got one Mason, more for you. Not Miles. You got another That's NBA? Well. One, one last NBA play. Uh, I'm looking at the Atlanta Hawks going up against the Orlando Magic, and I think this is going to be a Trey Young type of game. So I'm looking at his points and assists anywhere over. Uh, I'm not getting a FanDuel number right now for some reason, but if I could get that anywhere over around like 25, 30, 
Uh, I'm going to be comfortable taking it in there just because I don't know if you guys have seen the drama surrounding the Hawks as of late, but the whole story is that Trey Young is the cancer to that team. So I think today against a kind of lackluster Orlando Magic backcourt, defensively at least, um, I think he's going to have his way tonight. Isn't every Atlanta Weird. Hawks game a Trey Young type of game? It, it could be. And yeah. that is the problem, too, because they yeah. bring in a guy like DeJounte Murray and it's like, oh, you should be you know sharing the wealth. And it's all about Trey Young all the time. And they're turning on him. I know he missed a game. He was not even on the bench for a game. And yeah. he was asked about it. And it became this whole big thing. Yep. Uh, so there must be some acrimony going on between him and the coach. But I don't hate the NBA, Aton. I hate the hype. Well, I know. I, I hate betting on it. I guess there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to have two bowl games on Friday. The Las Vegas Bowl too. and the Fenway Bowl. Uh for Friday's show. But until then, enjoy Thursday night football. Good luck with your bets, and we'll talk to you on Friday.